Organized labor suspends strike in Kaduna following the intervention of the federal government. But the Kaduna state government isn't convinced. Senate's debates bill prescribing a 15-year prison sentence to persons who facilitate ransom payment. And cryptocurrencies continue free fall after China places new restrictions on digital currencies. Good morning to you and welcome to The Breakfast here on Plus TV Africa. Beautiful Thursday morning as we always like to describe it and thank you so much for waking up with us. I am Osao Gye Ogbon. And I am Aneta Felix. Good morning. Good morning to you. How are you? I'm, I'm doing all right. Looking very pretty in red this morning. Thank you. All well, the lips, uh, anyway. Good morning, anyway. So let's get straight into uh, you know some of the things that we were discussing this morning. For the next two hours, we're going to be having very, very interesting conversations on some of the biggest uh, you know topics across Nigeria today. Yes, insecurity and the NLC strike in particular. Absolutely. Um, you know, yesterday we spoke with Ayuba Waba, and of course uh, he seemed very adamant that the strike was going to continue regardless of whatever tactics the Kaduna State Government was going to use. But um, yeah, apparently a couple of hours later the strike was called off because of a. Uh, uh, proposed meeting that they have with the Minister of Labor today and of course uh, to create a space for dialogue but we'll get into that uh, sometime during the show this morning. Aside that some other thing that is making headlines across uh, the country and across the world is the free fall of cryptocurrencies uh, mm. across the world. A lot of people have had mini heart attacks. Uh, some people of course uh, have lost a lot of money and um, it doesn't seem to be changing. Bitcoin, which used to be as much as, I think it got to $50,000 at some point, or even higher, uh, dropped to as low as $38,000 yesterday. I heard this morning it's climbed up to um, $39,000 uh, for a Bitcoin. But there's been others, the Ethereum and the other names that you can, you know, you can imagine. Um, people have blamed China as the reason, because China, of course, uh, uh, declared its own stance with regards to cryptocurrencies and wasn't interested in, you know, the cryptocurrency market. And of course, Elon Musk also, who they have accused of playing Kalu Kalu with uh, cryptocurrency. So um, <laughs> these are some of the reasons why a lot of people are shedding tears across Nigeria today. Mm. Um, I personally have never been, been interested in it because funny enough, I remember uh, that there was a time back, I think maybe like 2016, that I had a radio interview and some people came to market cryptocurrency. And as early as that, I still wasn't interested. I'm like, uh, I don't know about this. You know, I'm not going to put my $100 mm. into any currency that I really don't know anything about. Um, but fast forward a couple of years later, it became the currency everyone wanted to trade in. Yes, and uh, for, for people who are wondering why is Nigeria, so, you know, or Nigerians so particular about this, I mean, cryptocurrency is traded globally, right? Well, the, the fact remains as per a 2020 survey or reports, uh, if, you know, we found out that more cryptocurrency trading goes on in Nigeria than anywhere else in the world. About 1.1 million Nigerians involved in cryptocurrency cryptocurrency trading millions of cryptocurrency trading goes on every day in the country many young nigerians who are unemployed even those who even have jobs have found cryptocurrency as sort of a, a new way to cash in cash out yeah. you know so it's just you know we know that it's this digital currency that you can't actually touch you can't actually see but this is basically a system using blockchain technology where every every transaction basically is anonymous so to speak and uh, we know how the the you know cryptocurrency was used to pull funds for the entire protest how in february 2020 the federal government, you know, intervened and said banks are restricted from trading or, you know, trading in cryptocurrency and all of that. It's just been a lot of controversy. But regarding cryptocurrencies, um, there was there was this major dip. The way we're seeing it now in 2021, it was the same thing in, in 2017. And you see lots of people giving their opinion on this. We know, first of all, um, Elon Musk, um, CEO of Tesla, uh, talked about how Actually, Tesla as a company put out a statement some weeks ago saying they would no longer accept cryptocurrency as a means of payment for their cars. And that single statement sent cryptocurrency yeah. dipping. And I saw people commenting on Twitter saying they would never invest in something that just one switch from a man can just, you know, well, turn known. around. And you see people co complaining, saying they put their dad's pension, their life savings into crypt cryptocurrency, and now it's crashed. But for me, when, when I think about investments like this, I, I like to be strategic in the way that I like to buy the deep. 
my meaning you buy low and you sell high, yeah. right? Because if you're buying when it's all the craze is all about this particular thing or it's all about cryptocurrency, all about Bitcoin, you are likely, likely well, to know, experience what's happening now, the uh, crypto crash. Everyone's speaking about buying low and you know expecting it to go high. What if you buy low and it continues to go low? No. You know? And I've seen people it's joke. It's it will go low, but it it's definitely come back high. I mean, as cryptocurrency <laughs> expert, they will tell you this. Crypt like it's definitely, definitely come back up. It's well, inevitable. You know, that is the faith that a lot of people had. This one that you have it's now. Statistics. That's, that's put you know um, a lot of them in trouble today. Statistics not fair. They've, lo they've lost a lot of money. People have lost millions of naira, uh -huh. um, dollars, you know, um, dollars and pounds even. You know, but I'm talking mostly because of Nigerians. Um, a lot of people have lost money because of you know not understanding the market and mm -hmm. you know the instability that could you know exist in that market. Um, like you said, for one person to be able to tweet um, and you know the value of cryptocurrency just continues to you know drop. And or go high. deep lower than you know crude oil then um it's it's a very very unstable place to trust you know that your money will be safe um do you have faith that it would come back up did you have plans for the money that you used to buy um earlier hoping that maybe by may or by april or, or by june you'll be able to use that money how long are, you, are they going to wait for it to climb back up before they you know might sell again and when it starts to rise at what point do you think Okay, I think I've taken enough risk. Let me, you know, sell. Yeah. You know, are you going to wait till it gets to fifty thousand or sixty or seventy? Do you think it might get to eighty thousand? Like or maybe every not? other thing, yeah. cryptocurrency investment is an investment, and for any other investment, it's a risk. It's a lack no of... risk, no reward, <sighs> so they say. Yeah, but it's 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 a lot easier when you can when you have a clear picture of what type of risk you're taking. You know, yeah, you cannot people risk. People are aware of the risk that Bitcoin can, the price of Bitcoin can go down today. Nobody, nobody it expected. It can go up. So, so this is what I'm talking about. So it's just like the stock nobody, market, really. It depends on the volume of volume of trade, and that's that. That really depends yes, on what, how the market. But nobody you know, would expect that a statement from China or from Elon Musk would affect it that fast. That's the difference. So yes, there's a risk in every you know business, but it, it should take some time. There should be some level of some leverage before a business starts to shake, and then you can say, okay, maybe this was a bad investment. Not just one tweet in one day, and everything just. That's why I said he uses to play Kalu Kalu because he can wake up tomorrow morning and say, oh, I think we had a rethink. We didn't you know um, observe this thing well enough, See, and we want to go that, back into that trading. That statement just made. Buying. No cryptocurrency enthusiast would ever agree that cryptocurrency is a bad investment, no matter how low it dips. See, well, um, let me pull out some tweets well, here from 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 Twitter. Um, the, there's a statement here. This one's not really a statement, just a single line saying dips equals discount. So if you want to invest in cryptocurrency, according to what the markets are saying, now is like the perfect time because you know it's it's low. And don't take this as financial advice. Simply my thoughts. Oh come on, hold me on Twitter. I say Aneta asked me to. No, I'm not asking you to invest. So you know, basically, people just talking about how you know the the cryptocurrency dip right now, the crash is really affecting their pockets. You know, but. Anyway, that's that's what it is. Good luck. Good luck Definitely, it will come back up. This it, is just... It's also it also shows you know a lot of Nigerians and their interest in or their lack of faith in the Nigerian currency. And so um, we've spoken many times about you know the likes of MMM and you know any other you know promise of money doubling. Mm -hmm. and Nigerians don't play with things like that. Once you have any idea, you know that maybe if you put your money here, it might triple, it might double, it might get a couple of percentage. Mm -hmm. Um, higher in a couple of months, they go straight into it. And everyone wants to make... Who doesn't know, that, want to double their money? money. I mean, Everybody. Who doesn't want to? That's, you, that's simply the concept of savings. Exactly. You put a little, you put a little, and the money keeps multiplying. But anyway, let's move on now to... Um, from cryptocurrencies and financial transactions to some other certain type of transaction that we're not exactly sure of. Because this happened in uh, Katsina State, I believe, yes. where a um, gunman allegedly abducted a Sharia court judge in Katsina. So when I talked about transactions, we have no idea if, you know, ransom demands would be made or has been made. But as far as we know, this occurred on Tuesday. You know, residents say gunmen suspected to be bandits allegedly swooped on the judge's courts, uh, which is located at a village called Baren Zakat uh, in the village council, and they swooped him away. So when I read the police statement, you know, I had mixed feelings about it because the police statement here, we saw that the spokesman for the Katsina State Police Command, Gambo Isa, he confirmed that incident. He said investigations are already underway. But he basically said this court judge should have requested police protection. He should have requested police escorts. And I'm like, okay, 
as an ordinary Nigerian who don't even have the financial means yeah. to go to the police station or put a call through to the police uh, uh, chief or whoever it is and demand for police escort, that means I am just on my own, right? Yeah, so it, put, it, it, it caught George should demand police escort before going to certain places in Nigeria. And it's basically saying here that he added that judiciary workers are on strike and he has no idea what the man is doing in court. Oh, wow, yes. that's cold. Um, yeah. But anyway... Um, you know, I always say that we need to realize what our true reality is as Nigerians. Um, if a judge can be taken from his court, um, then any person can be taken. Uh, there is, um, you know, some people who are, you know, you know, pretty much higher class, you know, that, uh, you know, these criminals expect to have money. And, you know, he probably is on that uh, on that level. Um, what truly is our reality in Nigeria? And I feel like a lot of people... It's one of the things that we're going to be talking about later on the show, and that is the 15,000, uh, 15 year sentence. We'll talk about that later. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people have taken advantage of the weak security infrastructure that we currently have in Nigeria, or not just have taken um, advantage of it, have seen that this is how poor security infrastructure is. Um, maybe they didn't notice before, but they've seen it now and they've decided, let's take advantage of it. If we kidnap somebody, we're pretty much you know, confident that they will be able to pay ransom without us getting caught. And it's become a booming business across Nigeria. I'm not sure if you spoke about this, you know, what's, you know, the, the um, stories about what's going on in Lagos, um, about people getting kidnapped, you know, along, you know, the, uh, Victoria Island, along, you know, um, Lekki Admiralty um, um, Way, and uh, taken in, you know, into, their, into um, 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 random cars. And this has driven. been confirmed? Yeah, I mean, I've seen stories like wow. that. I've seen one person who said uh, she, she suffered um, that. And, you know, they ask them for money, take all their valuables, and eventually kick them out, out of the car eventually. But it is basically... There is a very visibly weak security infrastructure that criminals have taken advantage of. We hope that the judge gets back home safe and unhurt, um, regardless of how he has to do it. Um, and um, we hope, you know, that there is an answer to kidnapping. The NINs don't seem to be working. Hmm. The, you know, um, moves made by the Nigerian government don't seem to be working in any way. Um, and so what really is the answer to ending kidnapping in Nigeria? Do we need to set up a new committee? Uh, to start to talk about what must be done to end kidnapping in Nigeria. Does the government need to place an actual ban on payment of ransom? I um, think, in my opinion, right, I know we're talking about this in detail in a few seconds, but placing, I know that I, I've read stories about how this particular method worked in other countries. I can't remember the name of the country now, but they placed a ban on paying ransom, and because of that, kidnappers knew they could not expect to get ransom because, you know, the people who they should be getting the ransom from are prohibited from doing so. So it worked, and kidnapping, you know, began to decline. But here in Nigeria, it seems like you're just treating the symptoms of a problem. The root cause should be tackling insecurity. Yeah. And for people who think this might not even affect you, I mean... Take a look, even in a place like Lagos, right, you're taking a walk on the street and it just seems like gone are the days when someone could just stop by and say, um, I want to give you a ride or do you need a ride? And you just hop in and say, oh, thank God, I have, you know, a free ride to my destination. Now everybody's scared. Nobody yeah. can just jump into any car. In fact... <laughs> No one's going to give you a ride. I was taking a walk. I, I, you know, I did some exercises yesterday. I was taking a walk back home and this flashy car stopped by. You needed to see the way I ran from that situation. I was like... Be me walking up. Nobody's safe anymore. It's just such a sad situation. And uh, like I mentioned, beyond treating these symptoms of you know putting a ban on on, on pain ransom, they should they should treat this the root cause because you wouldn't tell a, a parent who sent them was prized possession, maybe their only girl, whoever it is in their family, to yeah. school, and the person is kidnapped, and you say they should fold their arms and watch and not do anything to get their child back. They would definitely do anything. They would sell their house if they need to well, just to make sure that. A child comes back to them. Well, it, so it, the, the main the main issue should be tackled. Well, it it it, it might work, um, but until they make that is an official statement in Nigeria saying payment of ransom is banned completely, because now there's we're talking about a fifteen year sentence. Um, so you um, so for, okay, for, just a second. You you place a ban on paying ransom to kidnappers. They kidnap your daughter, right? You pay ransom, and they come and arrest you. While your daughter still remains in, well, so, so in this, the kidnappers, so this is, I really don't so understand this is how that would this work. This is the difference between those countries you mentioned. I think France or Russia, I'm not sure which it is. The difference between those places and, and Nigeria is they also understand their own responsibility as a country and as a system to protect and to rescue those citizens. Yes. That's the difference. So when citizens are not rescued, it is seen as a government failure. 
it is not seen as a failure of you know people to pay ransom or you know poverty. It is seen they know the and understand the value of the life of every single citizen. Mm -hmm. And so there is infrastructure, there are systems, there are institutions that are put in place to ensure that for every citizen you know that is kidnapped or might be at um, you know might be in danger, it is their responsibility. But the difference here is that the Nigerian government still doesn't understand the value of that Nigerian life. And so when you tell a person, don't pay ransom, the citizen already knows that if I don't pay ransom, I don't trust the government to rescue my child or my husband or my when wife. When the Kaduna State government was quoted as saying, we we're going to bombard the terrorist locations, yes, there's going to exactly. be a few casualties, a few girls will die, but we'll yeah. rescue some. All right. Stay with us. So we'll go on a short break. When we come back off the press, what major stories are making headlines across Nigeria today? We'll share with you. We'll be back.